Okay, check engine light is on. Vehicle rough on uh, idle. And on acceleration, bad performance. And when you accelerate, check engine light starts blinking. I got a feeling it's ignition coil, but uh, let's check. One code found. That's not good. Random, multiple, cylinder misfire detected. It's really tough to know what it is. Maybe it is multiple cylinders. I'll start by removing this cover, 10 millimeter bolts. I know that before I replaced some of them with a really cheap $20 ignition coils. So it could be that maybe a couple of them fault or it's one, but since they're very cheap, it can't even show me which one it is. So I feel like I might try to unplug one and just see if it's gonna get worse or not. But it sucks. I really expected to get a check engine that would tell me exactly which cylinder misfires. Now, crappy part two is there is only one, maybe two coils I could randomly kind of like this one. I could easily unplug everything else, you have to remove a bunch of stuff. Well, not a bunch of stuff, but some stuff to get to. And if you remove, let's say, this whole piece, car wouldn't even start, so you can't really test it by randomly unplugging stuff. Okay, one other thing to try, maybe it'll give me a better clue. If I tried already stored code, spanning code, and I'll try to go to permanent code. And here I see cylinder 3 misfire. So I guess I'll try to replace cylinder 3 and hopefully that's gonna solve the problem. So as far as ignition coils, like I told you before, I've seen on Amazon some for like 20 bucks. And they seem to work, but then I had once in a while they would fail in a month or two. Found this one, Hitachi. They go on Amazon for about $60. I found a used like new for literally only 20 bucks. From, from what it says here, it's made in Japan. Now it's a used like new, meaning it was returned. Hopefully it's working, but to me, saving 40 bucks, I guess it's worth it. It doesn't look like that it's been installed in any car for a while. But we'll see. As far as uh, cylinder locations, it goes like this, one, two, three four five six so for me number three gonna be right there i might be able to get to it without removing this one okay i'll start by loosening this one it's a eight millimeter size right there i'm gonna remove i'm gonna have to remove this one as well i believe it's gonna be 10. yes it's 10. And also, I should have done it before, but I'm going to loosen this 8mm one as well. Now I'll remove this. Or actually I'll loosen this one. And the bottom one. There you go. And just pry it up like this. There you go. I was just twisting this side and now it's out. So, like this, you could use, it's gonna be enough to change first one, but the second one, no, unfortunately, so we're gonna have to remove those four bolts. So, if you're wondering how to change really any on this side, if you just remove this piece, it's gonna be enough to change one, to change cylinder three and ch cylinder five, you're gonna have to remove this one. Just loosen it, don't disconnect anything, just remove those four bolts. On this side, very similar, you remove this piece like you do the other one, 
this just pull it out and you'll have access to this one to this one you should be able to access to all actually all three of them so obviously the easiest of all them to remove is number two because here you just you might have to remove this but that's about it and second easiest is cylinder one because you just remove this piece and you have access to it anyway let's uh, remove this one for this you need hex size 5 normally I would use a ratchet I'll try to use drill might be a little bit faster although probably won't able to reach all of them It's all still pretty hot here, so be careful. I'll probably secure it back with a ratchet, I don't want to over tighten it with the drill. My advice, don't even use drill, I just was seeing how it, how it would work, don't use it, just use ratchet. Just once it's out, just pull it on the side. As I said before, don't remove any connectors because then you're gonna, you might have to reset stuff. Engine might not run fine until it adjusts itself. So I'd say don't disconnect anything. Now, if you're trying to remove cylinder three, you can just move it like this temporary. Trying to get to cylinder five, you move it like this and you have access. So let's uh, remove cylinder three. I mean, uh, ignition coil for cylinder three. Okay, to remove that cylinder, three ignition coil, we'll need to find 10 millimeter socket, right there. Well, it's in there tight, so I'll use a ratchet. Okay, now I'm gonna Temporary remove this. Actually, I'm gonna disconnect the connector to ignition coil. Hopefully, you've seen it. Raise it up temporary. That's a connector disconnected. Now I'm gonna pull it out. Can't tell if it's good or not, but that's what the reader showed. So it's out. And I'm putting this Hitachi replacement. Just slide it in. What I usually do is before I put it all the way in, I connect it. It's a lot easier to connect sometimes like this while it's out. Connect it and push it in. And secure it with that same 10 millimeter bolt. It doesn't have to be tight, and I don't even know exact torque specs. Just make sure it's in there. Okay, it's in. Now let's secure the throttle body. I like to just kind of tighten it first. And actually, right on the throttle body, I see it says Nissan and Hitachi. So hopefully, the one I got is actually original. Let me know in comments if you have any experience in that, so that I know what I'm getting. Okay, everything secured. Last piece is this uh, pipe extension, whatever. So how to do it properly is I'm gonna make sure, try to have this extension. 
plugged in on a valve cover. Plug in. At least kind of plugged in. Then I plugged in the throttle body. And then the bottom. Now before it's before I'm doing anything else, that thing I want to make sure it's in there. Okay, it's in. Now it's time to secure everything. So I'll start with the one that goes to throttle body. That's just eight millimeter size. So all I'm doing is securing this. Now I'm going to do this one. Finally, I'm going to secure this 10 millimeter. If I find it, there you go. Okay, now I'm going to screw this 10 millimeter bolt right here. And before putting the engine cover on, I'm going to test, make sure it's working, or if not, I have to figure out what the issue is. Okay, let's start it and see. It definitely sounds better, no more issues at idling. Check engine light on, which we're gonna reset now. Double check also, make sure there is no other codes. Still shows one code found. Now, I don't know why, if I read it, stored code is 300. Pending code is 300. Permanent code still shows 303 and 300 i don't know why or what's the difference between permanent stored whatever but now i'm gonna go and erase with all the codes erase is done no codes this one still shows i don't know why or take some time anyway But, no more codes here, and no more issues on the dashboard, car idles just fine, I'm just gonna drive it to the front of the house, I have a good feeling, I don't think there'll be any other issues, but if there will be any issues, I'll post another video about it. That's pretty much it, let me know if you have any questions, let me know how few have issues to get into one of the cylinders, they all seem to be pretty easy to get to for most of them you'll just have to remove that uh, open the throttle body those four bolts take them out you should be able to move the throttle body around where you'll have enough access to any of the ignition coils i'll put a link to amazon of the ignition coil i bought to, for this repair so far and i bought from a bunch of different places so far these ones look to be it definitely is the best looking ones. It does look like it's original one. Maybe it's not, but it looks like to be OEM. Hitachi says, at least it says on it, they're made in Japan. Who knows? I think they cost about $60, $70. I was able to find return ones for $20, but most of them $60, $70. If for you it's tough to get to that area of the engine, it, it, and one of them, one of your ignition coils went bad, maybe it's a good time to replace just all six of them and replace uh, spark plugs if it's been a while since you replaced it. That way you'll just have to go there once instead of any time ignition coil fails. Alright, and as always, please subscribe, post any comments, like, and share. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Okay, let's put this back. While you're working on a car, I mean, you should do it more than that, but while you're working, definitely check your oil, coolant level. All that stuff wouldn't hurt, you already here, might as well.